want to show you how to use the VLOOKUP function. I've opened another spreadsheet that we can use to show off this very powerful function that allows you to look values up in a different table. What you can see here is a simple spreadsheet that I can use to automatically determine the tax rate based on an income value that I enter in cell B2. So if I look at the cell in B, the value in B2, it says $21,000. Now if I wanted to find the tax rate, then I would actually just look in the tax rate table on the left and I would find the range of cells where the tax rate lists. So maybe around, probably right about here is where I'd find my 21,000 and I can see that the tax rate is 28%. Now I can actually have the spreadsheet do that automatically. So this is one of the powers of the spreadsheet is that I could automatically have this tax rate added into a spreadsheet and calculated no matter what the value is. So if I change this income, maybe say $30,000, then automatically the tax rate gets updated. So I'm going to show you the function that allows us to do that and it's called the VLOOKUP function. Now just below this cell I'll start writing the function that allows us to automatically determine the tax rate based on the value entered in cell B2. What I'm going to do of course is start all functions with an equal sign and I'm going to start typing the name of the function VLOOKUP and we see that the VLOOKUP function looks for a value in the leftmost column of the table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify and by default it must be in ascending order. So I'm just going to kind of clarify that a little bit. Now to make this chart on my screen or this table on my screen more readable I've put three columns in it but for VLOOKUP it really only needs two columns which is the value you're going to s search for which is actually your tax rate and the value you're going to use as a lookup value. So this works a lot like a phone book so when you have a phone book and you want to look up a person's phone number, you don't actually look up their phone number first, you have to look up their last name first. So the last name is the lookup value. So in this case, since I want to find the tax rate, I'm going to look up the income. So my income is actually here in cell B2. So that's B, that will be our lookup value. Now I press comma and now it's looking for a table array and a table array is just another name for a range of cells so I'm going to select the range of cells from C2 to, C to E7 and then let go so that's C2 to E7 and then I can add a comma and now it says column index num well that's just a simple way to say that it's looking for a number and this number is the column that I want the value returned out of. So my tax rate is in the third column of this table. So I see that C is column 1, the D column is column 2, and E is column 3, so I want the third column in this table. So it's going to look through the cells from C2 to E7 until it finds a value greater than or equal to 30,000 and it knows that's where the range is going to sit. So that's how it can find the particular value. Now there is a last value here which is the range lookup but it's in square brackets so I could leave it off. If I leave it off it's going to be true which means that it will approximately match the values which will actually work if the numbers are in order, in ascending order from lowest to highest. If the list wasn't in ascending order then I'd have to use false here. But I'm just going to leave it off and close my round bracket and then I hit enter and now I find that 30,000 is a tax rate of 31% and if I change this again to 60,000, 68,000 then my tax rate automatically change and the fact that I don't have a percent sign here just means that I need to format it on the home tab in the number group I can simply click the percent style and now I have 45% and I can in increase the number of decimal points. So that's how VLOOKUP works. Now as you can see on this part of the spreadsheet, you can actually use named ranges in the case, as always, wherever you would use a cell range. So if I had named the range from C2 to E7 and called it tax table, and in fact I think this range is named, no, then I can just use the word tax table in place of the table array. I'm going to set the income tax back down to a normal rate, let's say $28,000 and we see that the tax rate is 31%.
Now I'm going to show you an extra function called the if statement, or the if function. So here's our little scenario. I'm going to say that I have a spreadsheet, I have a cell on my spreadsheet that I want to have displayed as the income level. So in place of the, so right beside the income level, I want to actually have some words displayed. I'm going to display some words, but you could also have different calculations done or have different values appear in this cell, which is D18. But I'll show you what I want to do first. I'm going to start with the if statement. And the if statement checks whether a condition is met and returns one value if that condition is true, and it returns false if that, uh, it can return another value if that condition is false. So as I start the round bracket, I can see that it takes a logical test as a first parameter. Now the logical test is going to be similar to the condition or the criteria that we used using the COUNTIF function. But a logical test is going to say, I'm going to say the cell value B2 and check and see if that value is less than 20,000. So this is the test. Is the value in B2 less than 20,000? And the value of true, now it does say that it's in square brackets, which means it's optional, but in this case I actually have to put either one or the other. So value of true, I'm going to say if it's less than 20,000, I want to display low income. And just to show you what happens if the condition is false, which I'm actually leaving off because it's optional, I will just close this per argument, I will close this function, and we'll see what happens. So the if statement will then check to see if the value in B2 is less than 20,000, and if it is, display the words low income in the current cell. So I've hit enter, and it's automatically done its check, and now it says false. Well, that's because the value in B2 is actually greater than 20,000, so it's not less than 20,000. So what I can do is I can change this to 5,000 and I can instantly see that the, the words low income change depending on the value that I type into B2. So now I've set it back to B to 30,000. Now let's fix this just a little bit because I don't want the word false to appear so I'm going to press F2 and edit the cell and I can simply move into the arguments inside the parentheses and now the value if false. So if it's less than 20,000 I'll have low income and if it's more than 20,000 I'll say they have moderate income. And that cell is not wide enough to display the text completely so I can just move my mouse between the column headings and I can see where my mouse changes shape and I can double click right there and it automatically makes that column wide enough. So now I have a value, called a part on my sheet called the income level, that will display the right value based on the, the criteria in B2. Now we have two levels of income, low and moderate. What I want to have is something a little more flexible. I want to add a third level of income. Let's say that if somebody is making less than $10,000, we want the income level to say that they need financial assistance. In order to do that, I'll have to add a second in I'll have to add a second if statement that will allow us to make different changes. So I'll have to add a second if statement so that I can have three levels of income. What will happen is I have my first condition, which is if the value is less than 20,000, I will display low income. But this is where I'm actually going to put in my second if statement. If the value in B2 is less than 10,000, then the value of true is going to be needs assistance. But if it's not less than 10,000, then it's still less than 20,000, so I want it to have low income. So that's why now low income is the value if false. At this point, I'm at the end of the inside 
if function. That's the inner if function. So I can close the round bracket here and I can see that the green parentheses or round brackets highlight the parameters for the first, well, highlight the parameters for the second if statement. So now that I have that nest, that if statement nested inside the first if statement, so it'll be checking whether the income is less than 10,000. If it is, it'll say needs assistance. If it's less than 10, if it's greater than 10,000 but less than 20,000, it'll say low income. And now if it's greater than 20,000 or equal to 20,000, they'll say moderate income. So I'm actually going to change this around a little bit. I will actually add this condition here that the income could be $10,000 or less. So less than or equal to 10,000 and they'll have needs assistance printed in the income level cell. So I press enter and now of course since the value in B2 is 30,000 then that's a moderate income. If I change it to 20,000 it's still moderate. If I change it to 19,000 it's low income and if I change it to 5,000 it becomes needs assistance. So by using a nested if statement inside the first if statement, I can have three levels of income. That's using the if statement. Now the last thing I want to show you today is not an if function and it's not the VLOOKUP function, but it's simply a feature of Excel that allows you to display multiple columns and rows on the screen at the same time. This is a feature called freezing panes. If you look at this spreadsheet, there's actually a lot of values here. I have students in the left hand side that scroll all the way down and I have, and in fact I'm going to zoom in a little bit just to make this a little more visible. Whoops, zoom in, side back. And you can see that I have some column headings for final grade assignment marks and midterm marks. And you'll see that if I scroll to the right to see different marks, so I can get to the total marks that have been added up for a semester, then over here on the right, I can no longer, or so over here on the left, I can no longer see the name of the student. So if I scroll down to a couple of rows, then I don't actually know what student, student number 25 is. And there's a way to fix that. If I move up to the top of the sheet, I want to make it so that the first column is frozen into place and the top row is frozen into place. So that as I scroll down or to the right, then those columns will, and that top row will always stay in position. So in order to freeze column A and row 1, then I place my cursor or I make the active cell B2. And this is really important because some people, when they try to do this, often get this part wrong. If they choose, if I choose the view menu now, there is an option that says freeze panes. And it allows you to keep a portion of the sheet visible while the rest of the sheet scrolls. Now with freeze panes, there is the first option which is freeze panes and it will keep the rows and columns visible while the rest of the worksheet scrolls based on the current selection. So I actually have B2 currently selected. I could choose to just freeze the top row or I could also choose to just freeze the first column. But I'm actually going to choose freeze panes. Now when I choose freeze panes, you'll see that there is now a thin black line between column A and B and you can maybe see that there's a thin black line between row 1 and 2. Now if I scroll to the right, you'll see that column A stays in place even though I'm all the way over here in column O where the total marks are. And if I scroll all the way down, I can actually always see the column headings. So now I know that I am in lab 2 for Lori Mertz. That's a very powerful way to be able to keep some parts of your spreadsheet displayed while other parts of your spreadsheet are scrollable. If I want to turn that off, just go into freeze panes and click unfreeze the panes and it returns things back to normal. Now the technique or the secret technique of using freeze panes is to always remember that it will freeze everything above and to the left of the currently active cell. So if I now select cell E13 and I freeze the panes, then now everything above E13, everything above row 13 and everything to the left of column E will be frozen in place. So you see that as I scroll to the right, A2 is still visible and as I scroll down, the column headings and actually row 12 are still visible. So I want to get rid of that, choose freeze panes and unfreeze them 
and again simply choose B2, choose freeze panes, and now you've got a great set of scrolling capabilities.